three dealing in Genesis, right? That one dealing for the entire nation of Esau. I want to read some. This is Amos chapter nine and twelve. It says uh, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all of the heathen which are called by my name. Thus saith Yahweh that does this. So the Bible is saying that Edom and the other nations are called by the Most High's name. The only way you can be called by his name is if you're trusting in the Lord and keeping the law, statutes, and commands. That's just a fact. All right, Shalom. This is Har One by Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say Kal Halayim, La Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Harakar Kodash, Ma'amah. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwati, my children, that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Hey, man, I want to do this lesson real quick. On the damn, um, this novice right here, and of course, uh, the deem the demon side netta, or they call side nigga, because that's what he used to act like a nigga. He used to walk up to the camps and be one of the main scoffers and making threats, all kind of shit. You know, he's disrespect the Lord's name. Um, now you may hear him calling out, saying Yahweh Shai, saying Yahweh, but you can't. Be, people can't be fooled by that because um, it's comical to me, man. You know. That this dude, um, I'm gonna show you how side another play. He like the fucking, um, what do you call it? The host, you know, um, of the gladiator games of the of the fucking Roman arena, you know, the motherfucker that uh, he called himself some type of e Egyptian pagan uh, god that or idol that overlooks debates, you know. He, he literally calls himself that. So he don't care. He choose either side. He's like neutral. But he got his own personal beliefs. So now with that being said, you can't be fooled just because he pulling scriptures. And he got a, 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 a ex-member of Sakari on there. And he claiming um he's an Egyptian Hebrew. You can't be both, man. So that's a whole nother topic. So I'm just I'm just putting that disclaimer out there not to be fooled by Sanega. He's not... Waking up to the truth. It's up to the Lord with that. But you can't be what? Double-minded. You can't be lukewarm. You got to be cold or hot. You can't be an Egyptologist and a damn, I mean, and an Israelite. All right? Or and being the truth. You can't do that. So this dude, he, he can play that game with somebody else. But this guy named Shabar. All right? Shabar. Hey, man, my, um, you know, my, uh, if, Opinion on him is he's a novice. All right. I, I listened to the whole damn video, two hours. Well, I'm about an hour or something, man. <clears throat> and I had to write down all the all the parts where he was making his questions. See, this guy like to he liked to form questions but make them statements. And he'll say, Hey, you can y'all can't answer these questions. But then when you try to answer it or attempt to answer it, or after he's done stating his question, he'll make it into a statement. Like he's standing on that. This dude just got questions. He's he's swarmed by demons of questions, all right, deceiving thoughts. And and I'm sure that the cats in Sakari couldn't answer those questions. And that's why you end up with people like this. All right. So they over there create monsters in these camps. All right. And you didn't but then you have uh these camps trying to call councils on people and shit, but they need to deal with their own house. They need to deal with their own baggage being thrown out in the streets. Right? So um, I played the video in the beginning. He went off a lot. And side nigga was right there to eat it up, you know. But this dude here is um, <clears throat> clearly looking for attention. And I'm sure that um, with Sakari or whatever, they kind of, they probably were going back and forth. And this guy probably here felt like he didn't have a voice. So he went to the devil. He went to side nigga. All right, just like that new that new movie that's out, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. All right, uh, not saying Sakari, you know, but this guy here, man, he's in that Judas spirit. He's side with the devil. He's talking about becoming part of Sinetta's team. All right, to bash Hebrews and to bash the Bible, uh, make it seem contradictory. But I'm gonna get a scripture real quick, and I'm gonna prove his point uh, wrong on Amos nine and twelve. This is First Timothy 3 and 6. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. 
And that's what this brother has done. Or he, or or we're witnessing him in the midst of his free fall. He's falling, man. And he's not getting up. Because he's a novice. He was lifted up. A novice means a new recruit. And if you're new in this truth, you shouldn't be running around with side netting. So you got to watch how people move, too. You know, it's about scriptures, but down here, we're the eyes and ears. So you got to watch out. You got to play eye spy. See how these motherfuckers moving. What do you see? But what I see is a busybody moving around everywhere. Right? So you got to watch these cats, man. New new recruits. Figure, acting like they got the whole Bible figured out. Another thing I noticed is the dude teaching with his hat on. All right? And nobody mentioned that. So I know they ain't going to mention that because he don't know. So, so this guy's a new recruit. If you haven't been in the truth past four years, you're newly recruited, man. Five years, you know, that's still new. But at least after four years, you can gain some type of respect. And brothers can see that you're sincere, you know, they're really pushing. And you gain some type of um, notoriety in the truth. All right. Um, so now let me get the scripture that he was talking about. All right. So now what happened is this guy took this scripture out of context. Um, this is Amos chapter 9, verse 11. I'm starting from 11. And in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. So our, our tabernacle, our tents fell. Judah and uh, the, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. All right. So, but now we've fallen, especially since um, 586 BC. That's when Amos was speaking about it. But then you get to um, 70 AD, we were cut off. And we fell again. The falling away. See that? He said uh, there's going to be a falling away first. That's what he meant by it. the tabernacles of David has fallen. All right? Us and our land has fallen, has been raised to the ground. And close up the breaches thereof. All right? So the Lord's going to raise us up and close up the breaches, meaning. People like this guy, this novice, he's not going to be able to get it. People like Sarnetta, they're not going to be able to get it. He's only going to seal, he sealed it. That's why he's sealing the elect. All right, sealing it in their mind. And uh, two-thirds aren't going to be able to get it. I don't care how much they try. I don't care how, how much they try to infiltrate. Okay, how much they become novices and try to start their own doctrine. Now what? We put follow this dude with the hat on his head and shit. Follow him inside, nigga. To lead us through the pandemic and shit and destroy. <laughs> These people are crazy, man. So he's raising us up. How is he doing it? Through something called what? It says, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins and will build it as in the days of old. All right. So he's rebuilding us as in the days of old. So um, the word rebuild goes back to the word edify, edification. And that's what he told us to do, to edify. And the word edify means to build up, all right, to build. And we're building up the spiritual house, all right. Um, verse 12. So they're going to be raised up, and we're being raised up now. And he ain't say Esau. So he keep trying to spin it. The Lord said he's going to raise up Israel and the, the tents of David, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, all right. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. So that's it right there. They're, we're going to possess them. We're going to own them. All right. You're going to own the remnant of Edom. A remnant means whatever's left over. Whoever's on this earth in that time of Esau, they're going to become a possession to the children of Israel. Because Esau is the ambassador of the heathens. But guess what? It says this and, all, and of all the heathens. So all the heathens are going to be taken into captivity, which are called by my name. Say, if you're how would I do if this, right? So he's this this novice is saying that uh uh he says it was his name Shabar. He's saying that Edom is called by the Lord's name, and you can't be called by the Lord's name unless you're in the truth. <laughs> Listen, man, he read that wrong. Let me read it the correct way. Amos 9 and 12, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. Who's the day? The day is talking about David and Israel. I mean, uh, you know, the tribes of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel. That they may possess the remnant of Edom 
All right, now let's read it the correct way. It will read this way. That they may possess the remnant of Edom, which are called by my name. Talking about who? The Israelites are called by his name. They're the ones that's going to possess Edom and the heathens. Read it again. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which is called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. So the Lord is saying he's the one that called them heathens. He's the one that's going to raise up Israel to take possession over Edom and the heathens. All right, the ones which are called by his name are the Israelites. That's what it's saying right there. It's just spoken backwards. If you move that part a little higher, you'll understand it. All right, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. Who? The ones which are called by his name. The ones he just explained to you. The tabernacles of David and Israel, which are sifted around the world. All right. So he said, what? They're going to possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen. Okay, so let me read it one more time so it'll be clear. And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, say if you how would I do it this? All right. So he's saying, um, the the ones that are called by his name, they're the ones that's gonna possess the remnant of Edom and of the heathens. This guy is reading it wrong, man. He's flipping it all around. And he's saying that um, Yahweh is the one that called them heathens. He's the one that's doing this. So they could be mad at us all they want. But the Lord is the one that's, he said, vengeance is his. He called them heathens. All right? So the, the ones that are called by his name are the Israelites. And they're going to possess Edom and the heathens, the rest of the heathens. So this novice broke that down wrong. What he said was, Esau can make it because of this scripture. All right, 2 Timothy 2, um, 23. Uh, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. So this dude is all about strife. That's what it is. You can see a smirking. When that guy Tazaria got on there, asked him about the strangers and, the, and um, you know, and this dude was combative. He was being combative, man. So he's all about strife and he's trying to hide it. And he went to the, the main culprit of dealing with strife and that's side nigga. Now he's talking about he, he's going to be the one that exposes everybody. Now he's trying to expose the Bible and he can't call it a contradictory. <laughs> Anyway, man, these dudes contradictive. And he, this guy is a novice, all right? Easy work. But what it says right there is these are the ones that are called by his name. They're the ones that's going to possess Edom and the heathens. All right, so with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalom.